Hey, what's up, y'all? It's Poppin' with Cracking. It's D-Boss Reacts to this Choice TV vid. It's titled Unpopular Opinions. I am not taking back, period. Let them know. Let these niggas know. I, I love videos like this. I like when people speak their minds because we're in a sea of, of fakeness. And people scared to say how they truly feel because they don't want to get canceled. I don't get bullied online. Fuck all that. Say how you feel. <laughs> That, that's just my my way of viewing things. Anyway, let's see what he got to say. Let's watch. Some viewers may find this disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Hi, my loves. It's Death and Choice and watching Choice TV. So for today's video, I felt like I really had to get on here and come back with an unpopular opinions video and come right out the gate swinging. <coughs> I just had to let all these thoughts out because we're all entitled to our own opinions. Period. But here are my unpopular opinions that a lot of y'all might not like, a lot of y'all might disagree with, or that will probably make you unsubscribe to me. The Sonia Massey situation is a very heartbreaking situation. Basically, Sonia Massey is a woman who called the cops for assistance. I had thoughts about this too when this happened, but I, I just let it go because she died and I just don't. She died. If she didn't die, then I probably would have talked about it, but she died. So I kind of don't want to, you know, it just seems a little, it just seems a little weird. Came through, they asked her for her ID. They were kind of bickering. She had an attitude with them. They had an attitude right back Cause I have a strong her. opinion she about She tried to grab a pot of water and they basically blasted on her ass because she basically was asked to put the pot of water down. Now, of course, they blasted on her ass, which is insane because, again, how is a pot of water going to resist a gun? Like, it just doesn't make any sense why they even blast on her. <sighs> what do you help with? Nothing. I just... Please God, please God. Minutes later, Massey picks up what appears to be a pot of boiling water from her stove. The deputy on screen identified by... And actually, my strong opinion has more to do with other people's reaction more so than her reaction. But it doesn't seem like she was the most mentally stable at all. And I feel like a lot of people glossed over that. I guess I am saying my opinion then. Here we go. <laughs> people glossed over that. But more so people were just like, oh, they're so offended because she's talking about Jesus. And it's because they're demons. And I'm just like, she she didn't seem like she was mentally stable. Obviously, he used excessive force. And he definitely should be penalized for that, for sure. Go to jail, all of that. Because this is not how you handle this situation. But they were just trying to make it seem like she was just completely innocent and angelic and he just did this out of the clear blue sky and i don't agree with that but of course he's wrong let's be clear you don't kill somebody over this that's wow you used excessive force completely go to jail yes but <laughs> people's response they, it definitely puzzled me a bit. I'm like, did we watch the same video? Computers as Sean Grayson. Walk towards the person. Civil rights attorney Ben Crump speaking alongside Massey's family who say she'd suffered from mental health issues. I've never, I've never seen this ever. I didn't even look deeper into this. I saw the video. I saw people's response. And I was like, you know what? This is a fucked up situation because this lady died and she shouldn't have died. I'm going to just leave it alone. And I, I just moved on. RP to the lady and I moved on. But I did not see that they said that. But I, that's what I'm saying. Nobody acknowledged that when it was clear from the video. They're just like, oh, she was just, she just was talking about God and they were offended because she just mentioned Jesus. And that's how you know they're demons because just the merest mention of Jesus got you so worked up where you want to, I'm just like, are y'all, <laughs> that's what y'all tw twisting this into? Like, what? But wrong, again. I want justice for Wrong. Yeah. The, the cop is wrong. You don't Racing kill her. Was fired from his job as with you the should sheriff's be. department, and a grand jury has now indicted him on three counts of first-degree murder. Yes. And now her, Deserve. you know, passing is going viral, and it's now the new top story that everyone's <coughs> talking about. But people keep trying to associate with race and black people getting killed at higher rates by the police. And let me tell you something. Police brutality is a real issue. Police brutality, has, there's a lot of social bias of a lot of the police officers. But I don't think her situation had anything to do with rape. I think it was spiritual warfare. I think that dude was very demonic. Because the minute she said, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus, that's when all hell broke loose. And out of nowhere, he blasted on her. So I think it was more... I think he... See, I don't agree with that. <laughs> and I also feel like it was, it was race motivated. I feel like that was his opportunity to be like, oh, this black person is doing too much. I'm about to use force because you give me a reason to use force because you, you're trying to attack me with this water. You're about to throw water on me. Then I'm, I'm using force. So I, I feel like it, it did have more to do with, with racial bias. I don't, I saw a lot of people saying what he's saying. So I don't think this is an unpopular opinion. I think this is a very popular opinion. 
everybody was saying, oh, it's just God, get people so worked up. All she did was mention, no, she picked up that hot water, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Like, he see, though, okay, she's a little crazy. I'm going to shoot you because you're about to throw water on me and try to burn my face off. But again, that's not how you handle that situation. And he probably felt more comfortable to kill her because she was black. I agree more with that than the spiritual warfare thing. I don't know. Spiritual, and I think this guy was just a fucking idiot, or probably might have been like some type of like slow or some shit. But I don't think it was race. I don't think it was racism. I don't think it was race. I think, I think race is tossed around way too easily in this generation. And I feel like you gotta have justified proof to be able to say that something is legit racist. Horror movies have been really whack lately. But there's one Sorry. movie that I'm gonna put y'all on to. The Girl in the Basement is one of the scariest movies that I've seen in a very long time. Watch it. It's on Roku, Amazon Prime, it's on Hulu, it's on I'm YouTube. Crazy. You can literally buy it on YouTube for a dollar. The Girl in the Basement is one of the best psychologically messed up films I've seen in a long time. If you wanna get a good mind fuck, please watch The Girl I'm in the Tracy. Basement. It came out it. literally like three years ago during the pandemic. Watch that movie. It's insane because you really never know what people are capable of even if you think that you know them very well i don't look like young jock so for as long as i can remember <laughs> i have been told for most of my life that i look like the rapper young jock he made that song oh, Meet me at the mall and made that song whatever i don't listen to his music Sounds but similar. young jock oftentimes gets compared to me people say that we look alike i don't know do y'all see it but I don't think we look alike Barely. at all. I just, I mean, I see it in the head shape and the eyes, but me and Young Jock don't really look alike. Yeah, Diddy is going through it, and I honestly feel like this is all an orchestrated attack. He ain't shit for all the things he's been accused of as far as date rape, sexual assault, stealing people's music, breaking people's hearts, stealing people's dreams, and putting the paws on Cassie. He definitely is a horrible person, it's very clear. Here. But I do feel like it's all oh. an orchestrated attack to make sure that he lose all his stakes and his businesses and all his endorsement deals. Because it's interesting how there are so many rappers and entertainers and actors in Hollywood that are just as fucked up as him. For example, XXXTentacion, the rapper who died back in like 2018. He was horrible to his girlfriend, <laughs> beat the shit out of her. Then there's Dr. Dre, Dr. J was horrible to his fucking ex, Michelle. And I, I've talked before, you know, on in radio days about um, Dre and putting his hands on not just you, but remember that old VJ D Barnes. Well, I yeah, stayed because it was normal. Well, after the first hit, you, you <coughs> don't think they're gonna do it again, and it 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 does escalate. On top of that, he beat the fuck out of a journalist, a female journalist, back in the early nineties. This person, Dre Brooks. Oh, I and when you do it, did he say anything? Just grab me. He grabbed you. They grabbed me by my hair and started slamming me up against the wall. What were the lingering injuries from what happened? Migraine. Major, major migraine. It's always on the same side, you know, the side of my head. To this day. To this day. 24 years mm -hmm. later. 24 years later. And then let's talk about the fucking actress Emma Roberts from American Horror Story. Emma Roberts beat the fucking brakes off her ex. And no one talks Emma. about that like that. These people don't lose their endorsement deals. I feel like they literally shine a light on who they he feel like so they're sweet. done with and through with. I'm and sorry, eventually, but that's just how he thinks. When it all comes crashing down and they get rid of you and they see no purpose for you, they're just gonna let all these media frenzies come out about you. They're gonna let all these stories come out and then it's basically gonna be a rap for you. I understand why Wendy Williams does not have a lot of genuine friends in her rough times right now. Wendy Williams, when she got <laughs> sick, ghosted a lot of people. And on top of that, she's very nasty to people yeah. on her team who tried to help her. She's just nasty, 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 nasty. Just so mean to fucking people. And I get she's going through shit, but then people ain't do Don't shit to you. I do man. shit to you. Why exactly. are you just treating me? Because you got shit going on in your own life. So Bye. I understand why people don't want to deal with Wendy Williams shit unless they're getting paid or getting some type of monetary gain from it. Because what do you gain from dealing with someone like this who behaves like this and treats you horribly because they're fucking sick in the head? I don't trust nice people. I trust kind people, but niceness is typically an act. I don't trust nice people because nice people can sometimes say what they want to you, do what they can to you, and then eventually you fall for it and you thought they were amazing because they were so nice. Satan himself was nice, but that, but did that make him trustworthy? No. 
I don't trust people who are nice. Anyone that's nice, I automatically associate them with being people pleasing and extra and doing too much. And a lot of times people who are a little too nice are usually very phony and fake. Niceness and six, nine, is a mask. I and just kindness about this. requires sacrifice. That's just how you can tell somebody's character. When there's no benefit or nothing in it for them, that's how you know you can really trust somebody. Mm -hmm. And I just don't trust nice people because, you know, I've seen people go from being really, really nice to when you don't do what the fuck they want. Like, you ever just see somebody's mask just slip out of nowhere? Like, they get all angry and confused when you don't buy into their shit and they just start smiling and just be all sinister and evil? Yeah, I don't trust nice people. I just keep it cordial and polite and I just take people's nice sort of grain of salt and I'll just be respectful right back. But I think you can be nice and kind, um, but I don't trust people who are excessively nice. So I'll add on to that and say that because I've, I've talked about this many times. Uh, specifically about Mr. Beast <laughs> when everything was coming out about him I'm just like see these these overly nice people who try to make it seem like they're so angelic I don't know about them I don't trust them so I, I kind of agree with that I take everything with a grain of salt but you can still be nice I think if, if I know that there's something in it for you I'm just not going to trust you Cardi B does not need another album she already proved herself she already said rapping was a business venture for her. It wasn't always her Fuck goal to be a complete, massive mate. So, <laughs> I reacted to some on Patreon. I was talking big shit about it. Big, big shit. I was like, this shit, this shit is stupid, goofy. I don't want to hear this ratchet ass. <laughs> I mean, I don't mind ratchet music, but I'm just like, I don't want to hear this whole song about sex. Like, and this just gives, like, crusty trap house. Like, I don't like it. I kept listening to this song, and I like it now. <laughs> Listen, I started playing it in the gym, and I was like, fuck me on that <laughs> So, you know, opinions change, things change, all right? It is what it is, but yeah, that's an update for my Patreon people. <laughs> it's James Superstar Rapper. I like to make money. I don't really give a fuck. And I really like her verse specifically. Like, yeah. I mean, Rob's verse is cool too, it grew on me, but I, I mainly listen to it for Cardi's verse. About being lyrical, I don't give a fuck about this and that. If that shit don't work for me, I don't care. I like to make shit that's gonna make me fucking money. I like to make shit that's gonna climb me off the, on the <coughs> charts. Like, that's what I want. I wanna be up top of the charts. I wanna make money. I don't care about none of that shit. I know so many me, lyrical me, me. people. New York is a home of people that mm -hmm. knows how to fucking crazy rap. There's a home of battle rapping. New York is a home. <laughs> Y'all niggas are not listening to that shit that much in the club. So what's I'm gonna lie to you. For the longest time, I thought that English was her second language. I was trying to give her grace because I'm like, oh, it sounds like maybe she moved over to the states from you know somewhere else and she learned English maybe as a teenager or something. But when when I learned that she was born and raised in the states and English is her first language. And she, <laughs> she didn't speak English all her life. I was very confused. Okay. Problem with that. So yes, her new music does suck ass, and it is underperforming, unfortunately. But she does not need to lift lift another finger for as long as she lives. People still play her debut album cover to cover. She changed the world. She changed really? the game, and will always be remembered. Plus. People in this economy aren't buying fucking albums just for the hell of it. So this one is probably gonna fuck y'all up, but uh -oh. y'all need to hear this. I knew exactly what Trump meant when he said black jobs. Now, of course, people are like, oh my God, what's a black job? What's a black job? Okay, first of all, motherfucker, bitch, get out of your feelings Damn. real quick and <laughs> listen, okay? When Trump did his little debate or whatever, talking whatever the fuck he was talking about, he mentioned how a lot of the migrants that are coming into Chicago and New York City are taking jobs black jobs. Away from black people. A lot of the journalists in this room are black. I will tell you that coming, coming from the border are millions and millions of people that happen to be taking black jobs. You have the best. What exactly is a black job, sir? A black job is anybody that has a job. That's what it is. Anybody that has a job. <laughs> And Mr. they're, taking, they're I... taking the employment away from black people. They're coming in and they're coming in. They're... I've never even seen this clip, but obviously that's what I thought he meant as well. But I just thought the discourse was funny because people was like making lists of black jobs. And it's like nail tech. <laughs> Not nail tech, lash tech. We were saying lash tech. And I'm just like, bro, facts. Um, but yeah, I mean, I assume I feel like that was self-explanatory, but I guess not for everybody. Some people are a little slow, and they they were actually questioning like, what does it mean? 
What does a black draw mean? Invading, it's an invasion of millions of people, probably 15, 16, 17 million people. I have a feeling it's much more than that. And, and everybody's been seeing what's happened. The first group of people, the black population, is affected most by that. And Kamala is allowing it to happen. She's the border czar. She's the worst border czar in the history of the world. There's never been a border czar like this. She's never even essentially been. She said she was there once, but not the right part of the border. So she was a border czar. She's done a horrible job. These people are coming into our country, and they're taking black jobs and Hispanic jobs. And frankly, they're taking union jobs. Unions are being very badly affected by all of the millions of people that are pouring into our country. And what he means by that is a lot of these migrants that are some way somehow getting through the southern border and being bought to New York City and Chicago on fancy ass luxury buses with AC and they're getting crates of food and education and they're getting cheese sandwiches and a free bed and their kids are getting free schooling and they're getting free health care. And there are dozens of migrants camped out in front of the Roosevelt Hotel and many of them have been out there all day in the heat Right now, there is a line wrapped around the block, and some people are sleeping in buses there. A sign outside the hotel says it has reached capacity and can't take any more asylum seekers at the moment. The Roosevelt Hotel began taking migrants back in May. New York City Councilman Keith Power says the city is monitoring the situation and working on locations to place those migrants. And feed vaccinations and shit taking resources from people who are already struggling in New York City and Chicago, where it's super fucking expensive and people can't even keep up with inflation and can't even afford their own rent in a city that they grew up in, but they're bringing migrants in here. Not saying they shouldn't be mistreated, but I mean, it's just not fair when America keeps trying to find excuses to not, you know, help, you know, the single mothers out here. We know America's not finding a way to help the people that are struggling. They can't even clear and help people with their student loan forgiveness, but they can come up with hundreds of millions of dollars where the fuck they get the money from, bitch? Where the fuck y'all get the money from? Like, you know what I mean? It's just, I'm not fucking with that. So when he said they're taking black jobs, I understood what he meant. Because when they eventually get on their feet and they get to leave these migrant homes, they are going to move in the hood. Some of these migrant homes are in the hood. Yeah, Erica, and for many different reasons, among them the fact that this $51 million approved today is only a short-term fix and more money will be needed in just weeks. We cannot continue to falsely pick communities against one another. Deep emotional wounds coming to the surface. As black people who have been hurt continuously by the city and country it loves, it ain't our responsibility to take care of everybody else. And anger. We don't want to have to recall anybody. We don't want to have to protest anybody, but we are not going to be ignored, Brandon. Mayor Johnson. Many in Chicago's black community and the city council speaking out against spending $51 million to house migrants, asking when will the help for them finally become a reality. And it cannot be put on the backs of the residents of Chicago without showing them that they're getting something out of this. They're going to build businesses. They're not going to hire your ass. They're going to fucking build shopping malls, beauty supply stores, restaurants, get all types of loans. And then when they do, they're not going to hire anybody in the hood who's been there for generations. They're going to hire their own people who speak their language, who look like them, sound like them, and they can relate to. And then they're going to follow They're gonna follow the people who live in these communities around the stores. They're not going to be nice. They'll have a hiring sign, but they won't even fucking hire you and try to like put money back into the community. They're gonna to raise up the fucking rent by buying a whole bunch of property when they get the chance and then automatically they're going to just assimilate and act like the bougie motherfuckers that just completely you know don't remember where they came from and just are going to leave everybody who grew up in these communities high and dry so i understand what he meant because again a lot of these migrants are doing under the table job like if they're, they're not going to hire Juan or Susie or, you know, Catherine or Suzette or Brian from down the street who grew up in these hoods. They're going to hire someone who looks and sounds like them. And then guess what? A lot of times they're going to pay people under the table. Like, okay, fine. You know, you know what? Here's $200 under the table, you know, so we don't have to report to the IRS because, you know, you don't have your papers yet. You don't have your green card yet. You don't have a work permit yet. We'll find a way to, you know, just give you money. And we know that you'll do it for shit pay. So since you'll do it for shit pay, we'll just pay you under the table. Yeah. A piece of me sees where he's coming from and honestly just sees it as this America ain't shit because where the fuck do I get all this money from? You're paying for them to get free health care, but you don't get free health care. Hmm. I next up opinion that a lot of people sometimes may overshadow and not look into is 
First week album sales should not matter for people who are musicians. The algorithm of the scoreboard should be dead. Who the fuck is buying physical copies in this day and age? The Ozempic trend, in my opinion, is not a big deal. It's literally a diabetic drug that helps lower people's blood sugar. It just so happens to have weight loss benefits. I wouldn't <clears throat> use that shit my damn self, but I don't see a problem with people who do that. Because people need to worry about them damn Casamigos and them damn chicken sandwiches that y'all are eating at Chick-fil-A, Wendy's, and Burger King that have like unbelievable amount of fucking ingredients in it. I mean, look at Chick-fil-A chicken sandwiches. Why are there so many ingredients in just a chicken sandwich alone? I mean, yeah, there's obviously ingredients in the bread, but the fact that there's so many ingredients in just a chicken sandwich, the chicken coating, you know, the oils, the pickles, it's ridiculous. So people are worried about Ozempic and what the side effects might be. Some of y'all need to be asking yourselves why y'all are pre-diabetic before the age of 40. Think about that. So, yeah, realistically, Ozempic, yeah, there may be complications in the future. There's going to be some commercials that say, if you were a victim of Ozempic, please call this number. But Ozempic's not that deep. Now, there's other ways to also lose weight. You can literally <laughs> drink lemon water or cucumber water and lose tons of weight. Or you can add drops of chlor. I don't agree with that. <laughs> the only way you're going to lose weight is if you're in a calorie deficit. That's, that's it. That's all. Trust me, I've tried it all. I've done it all. I've done all the research. And no fad is going to help you. You, you just got to be in a calorie deficit. The reason why uh, Ozempic works for a lot of people is it is because it makes them uh, not hungry. Like It fucks up their appetite completely, which I think is a terrible way to lose weight, honestly. From the, the fat people I watch who take it, <laughs> Wagovi and all that, it, it basically uh, blocks their hunger signal or something like that. And it also makes them nauseous, so don't recommend it. I think that's a very uncomfortable way to lose weight. Like, feeling nauseous, I feel like is one of the top three worst feelings ever, ever. Think about, like, when you got a hangover and the next day you feel nauseous. Who wants to feel like that to lose weight when you could just go to the gym and, and eat a little bit less? So, there's that. That's my advice. My video coming soon. Check out my second channel, D Chanel TV. <laughs> I'm, I'm putting up my, uh, my video very soon. But I'm currently on a cut. Um, and I've, I've lost weight millions of times. Okay. I, I does this weight loss shit. That's why I, when I get fat, I ain't even worried about it. <laughs> I, I'll big back and, and chill for a bit. I'll be on vacation. I'm eating everything on vacation. I'm chilling and enjoying my life. Cause I know when I get back home, I'm getting a business and I, I'm, I'm dropping weight. So trust me when I tell you stuff like this, it's not, this isn't going to do anything. Putting lemon in your water. That's not, that's not going to help you. You got to be in a calorie deficit. You got to eat less, move more. That's it fill in your water and lose tons of weight it may not taste amazing but it will make you shed pounds like crazy and your skin will flourish there's other natural ways to lose weight and i'm surprised people don't talk about those natural ways the problem with society is everybody's so fucking impatient and that's why that a lot part of too because it does take a while i've been on a cut uh for six weeks now i'm going on seven weeks and i'm still not done i got at least another six weeks to go um, so it, it takes a while. You got to be patient and just let it happen. You don't just lose weight overnight, just like you didn't gain it overnight. So that's the problem is that, yeah, people are impatient and they quit before any results even come. So that's the problem. And I have complications in the future, but they'll learn. The film Freaky Friday does not need a reboot. No one asked for that shit, and it, it clearly showed that Hollywood is very desperate to come up with decent ideas. Hear me out, but Freaky Friday was an amazing, timeless film in the early 2000s, and it's a part of my childhood, and most of y'all watched this childhood. But why are they rebooting it? Who the fuck asked for it? What people don't know is Hollywood is going through a big drought where a lot of these endorsements and these sponsors aren't trying to pay as much as they used to. It's not just influencers that are struggling, but it's also mainstream entertainers. That's not the first one, right? Wasn't it a freaky Friday film. before that? A lot of times, I'm not tripping. Mad I'm money to pay for these films, especially films that don't have big stars in it or films that don't fucking have like you know, you know, like crazy action and crazy special effects. Yeah, I a lot figured. of these films don't do well anymore. These romantic films don't do well. These comedy films don't do well. A lot of these films are oh, wacky. Yeah, films that do thing. well are seventy six is crazy franchises like Bad Boys, Avatar, Marvel, and continuations from old films. Like a lot of things just don't do well anymore. So I think I just knew it was a remake, but I've never seen the original. They actually really. pay people, and they use a lot of their budget to literally pay big name actors like Yara Shahidi or Lindsay Lohan or yeah, that was, that was already a remake Instagram, apparently. And they use them as a way to bring in numbers and generate revenue, and that's why for a long time there hasn't been any really good quality films that 
are killing it in the box office. Facts. So Freaky Friday is only getting rebooted, and Lindsay Lohan and Jamie Lee Curtis clearly agreed because work is slow, and tch, there's just nothing else that's going to be popping or going to kick off in the film industry. I don't feel bad for Bad Baby after she took her abuser back. I had, you know, a lot of sympathy for her and had a soft spot for her. If y'all didn't know, um, Danielle Ravioli, the Catch Me Outside girl, also known as Bad Baby, basically... I already spoke about this and people were mad at me. ...basically exposed the fact that her man was abusing her. Basically, he beat the hell out of her, he caught her outside, you know, he caught her outside and dragged her and everything. And people were making jokes and saying, oh my God, you know, oh. somebody finally caught her outside, all that stuff. And I didn't think shit like that was really that funny. Because, again, abuse and domestic violence is not a joke. But I will say, considering she took that person back, I don't really feel bad for her. And if you beat her ass again or even kill her, I really won't feel that bad for her. Oh, my God. Because I really know that if you're really somebody back who beat the fuck out of you like that multiple times and you got bruises and you got pictures and they're dragging you by your hair and you got a whole kid with them, you better believe they're going to do it again. So, yeah. I don't feel bad for her for going back and best believe that she has a lot of growing up to do and she'll learn her lesson in the long haul. Most people just like what to stick she to posted what they four know. Hours it was a sad footage? reality because that's why I don't get involved in people's relationships. The fact that she was blasting him, I was like, oh, wow, that's crazy. But I kind of knew she would take it back because that's what most women and men do. It's not that easy to just leave a toxic relationship, especially if you trauma bonded with this person or this person who's with you in a, strong, in, a, in, a, in a strong or low moment in your life. Now, think about it like this. Anytime anyone that, I'm, that I know or I'm associated with says that their man beat their ass again or stole their shit or fucked up their credit or like threw sugar in their gas tank or fucked their, fucked their best friend or fucked their cousins or fucking their brothers and shit, I literally just be like this. If they told me once, I'll tell them, wow, you should walk away, you should leave, I'm sorry that happened to you or you should, you know, do what's right for you and prioritize your self-work and your, and your mental health. And the minute they go back to that person and say, oh, yeah, I'm back with them, I used to be like, oh, wow, really? Damn, that's crazy. That's crazy. Wow. And I just leave it alone. And when I find out that that person is going through it again with that person, yeah, I, I usually just be like this. Oh, wow. Damn. He beat your ass again. Oh, wow. He pushed you down the stairs again. Oh, wow. He totaled your car. Damn, that's crazy. Yeah, you know, you should really just, like, learn how to duck and stuff. That's crazy. You know, you know, you, know, you should probably say boxing lessons because you can, you know, probably compete with him. Stop. That's crazy. Oh, wow. He, be, he, he he cheated on you again? Oh, damn. Wow, he burnt your house down? Wow, that's crazy. That's crazy. Like, it's just, I just, I don't get too invested because after the first time somebody literally goes in about their partner and then they go right back with them, at that point, you, you just need to check out and just let people just learn on their own. And it's sad because you've been the same people who are quick to cut off their friends for a little petty shit, like not going to a birthday dinner, mm. but aren't going to cut off their man for like smacking them across the room and knocking their shit loose. I don't. I used to have that sentiment for sure. And I, I mean, I still do for sure, but I'm, I'm just a bit more careful. But I've talked about this on my Patreon when I've talked about my story times. I used to believe in that so heavily, like women are so quick to stay with men who are doing them dirty, cheating on them, hitting them, like, you know, being terrible boyfriends, but they'll be so quick to cut their friends off. So I took that to the extreme <laughs> and I would then let my friends get away with a little too much because I'm trying to give them grace and I'm trying to be understanding and I'm trying to allow them to be flawed human beings. And I'm like, I'm not wanting to to be that person to where I am, you know, cutting my friend off because she did something wrong or she made a mistake. So I would try to give my friends grace and try to, you know, <laughs> try to be there for them even when they were showing they asked but it backfired it backfired too many times so now i'm just like mm, fuck y'all <laughs> fuck y'all bro see anything toxic cut about everybody niggas and bitches y'all both getting cut off people are very dramatic it's a speed dating show and these have existed these have literally existed since the fucking 1980s the only problem is that people on YouTube, people with cheaper budgets, are literally producing them and posting them on platforms like YouTube and TikTok. These dating shows aren't that serious, and people keep talking about how lame and corny they are, but at least people aren't going on fucking podcasts talking about how women and a high-value man should be all while they're fucking single and eating fucking corn chips all fucking day and selling dumbass courses on how you could attract your ideal partner 
Meanwhile, their ass is fucking single. Because at least people are actually interacting and are making an attempt to find love and date. TikTok and Instagram really need to knuckle down on him. these influencers who do food review videos. They need to force these food review channels on TikTok and Instagram to put up a little signal that says that they got paid for an ad. Mm, I don't trust a lot think. of these food review videos because every times where like I be looking at the food. When no facts. I've been led astray many times. Fuck y'all, bro. Even reviews on Yelp and shit, fuck y'all, bro. I don't trust nobody. I don't trust nothing. To my oldest, it's so good. No, it's not. I went and had it. No, it's not. That shit is ass. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, I'm not surprised that niggas is getting paid. Even Keith Lee, I don't know if I trust him either. I feel like he's too popular now. Can I really trust what he's talking about? I don't know. Reviewing food, and I'm like, ugh, that shit looks so fucking bland, and ugh, it's so soggy, and it looks old, it look all nasty, like there might be maggots in it and shit, Maggot. and they be fucking it up, or they be like taking bites and then adding jump cuts, because they want you to see their reactions to actually eating the food, because they got paid a couple thousand dollars to do a review. Yes, influencers on TikTok and on Instagram are literally getting paid a couple choice. thousand dollars per post, depending on how many followers they have. A lot of times, the food be so fucking whack. And it's illegal. Like, I, sometimes I'm Don't you got to disclose what you're getting paid? good. But they specifically will sometimes make it look good for the influencer. And then when you go get the food, the food is whack. It's shitty. Because they be lying. That is the other thing, too. That maybe the influencer is being honest. Maybe they did have a good experience. But the food was made so special for them. I trusted this uh, influencer. Um, it's this Asian dude that I watch. <laughs> I watch his podcast. Him and this his co-host, they went to this restaurant in Vegas and, and had this burger. And they were saying that it was the best burger they ever had in their life. They was hyping it up real heavy. And it really made me want to try it. So I went to this particular restaurant. It was at a steakhouse, mind you. And usually, I say usually, a lot of steakhouses that I've been to, they make some real good burgers. They, they know how to make some good gourmet burgers. A steakhouse, you want to get a good burger. You have a, a good chance of getting one at a steakhouse, but no. At this particular steakhouse, the burger was not hitting. I actually had to tell them to take it back. And I feel like they, the Asian dudes probably did have an honest like reaction to the burger and it, it was good but they went in there as themselves and was just like oh yeah we record whatever so i feel like the restaurant gave them this great burger they made it perfect for them because they want them to highly review it to attract people and when i went on a regular day it wasn't hidden so that's something else you got to be aware of that even if the influencer is being honest they probably got that experience because they are who they are I know Keith Lee say, says that he always sends his family in, though. He doesn't want to be the face of it because he wants a, an honest experience. But again, at this point, he's so popular that I don't even know if I trust that anymore. I don't, I don't really know how I feel about it. They literally will lie. So, don't trust them. If you want to know where to eat, don't watch food review videos. Instead, read the comments and figure out the people who actually went to that restaurant and see what they got to say in the comments. In fact, look at the comments for comments. Yeah, look at comments. Don't look at reviews. Even the Yelp reviews are getting compromised these days. <laughs> they be getting... They be offering you like free shit to give reviews and stuff so you really cannot trust these reviews but yeah i agree go to the comments like go on their instagram and and go on you know their tiktok and see what the public is saying who niggas who ain't getting paid or who don't have an, an incentive to lie other suggestions on where to eat in fact go to reddit and you'll find even better suggestions mm. in fact if you want to find a good place to eat ask locals another opinion that i feel like a lot of people need to hear is this Tyla should have opened her goddamn mouth and spoke on the color debacle on The Breakfast Club. A few months back, Tyla went on The Breakfast Club to basically promote her mm -hmm. album, and she went on The Breakfast Club to promote a new project and a whole bunch of random shit that no one really cares about too much. But basically, as Tyla was talking about, you know, her ideas, her thoughts, Charlamagne and The Breakfast Club got a long ass list of things that they were not allowed to talk about or ask about. So instead of respecting what her publicist had to say, Charlemagne took the list and he literally asked her every single question on live radio and for their YouTube channel. Who, who be on these debates that they be having about your opportunity? Uh, <laughs> I like that. <laughs> so in South Africa, mixed and biracial people are called colored. It just is what it is. That's just what it's been for a long time and they're still called that to this day. Because mixed people have their own category and black people have their own category and then there's other races. So... I feel like Tyler should have opened her fucking mouth. 
She instead froze up, got uncomfortable, and she turned to look at her publicist who then navigated her to just move on from the question, don't even answer it. She's answered the question before and it has started controversy, but if you're trying to break into the American market, the least you can do is talk about social issues. Because if you wanna dabble into this and you don't care to talk about a social issue, it just shows that you generally just, one, don't really give a fuck or don't care to educate yourself. And if you don't want to talk about it, I don't like that she said, I guess I'm just black. One, don't really <laughs> I guess I'll be black here. I'm give a fuck like, or no. don't care to educate yourself. And if you don't want to talk about a social issue or controversy, that's fine. But the least she could have said was this. Color means mixed. That's just what it is. It's different in Africa. Is is what it is. It's controversial, and that's that. It just means that you are tied to certain phenotypes. So she should have just opened her fucking mouth like this, and she should have just spoke up and just answered the question. It's not even that serious. Just say color means mix. She fucked up her own bag, and now people aren't gonna respect her. And unless she comes out with another hit, she's probably not gonna be around for too long. And that made me look at her kind of sideways, to be honest with you. Halle Bailey needs a reality check, and is incredibly self-absorbed for assuming people care that much about her hiding her pregnancy this much. There was no way in hell I was gonna share the biggest joy of my world with anyone. Halo was my gift. When did she talk about this? He is the greatest blessing. And I had no obligation to expose him, me, or my family to that unyielding spotlight. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Why are we talking about this? Did criticisms really? come? Of course they did. But with the state of the world and the place it is in, with men trying to force their will on our bodies and our reproductive rights, no one on social media, and for damn sure, no one on the planet was going to tell me what to do with my body or what to share with the world. Now, the world didn't stop because Hadley Baby kept her pregnancy a secret because, of course, she wanted her privacy. Her assumption that people were obsessed over her child says a lot about her ego. The world didn't stop spinning because you hid your pregnancy. She made a bigger deal out of it than the public when she made a speech making it very clear that people need to mind their business and shut up and just not even get upset at her for hiding her pregnancy. Plus, what she did is nothing new. Most mothers, when they first have their child, don't post their child on the internet for the first couple of months or sometimes even the first year. Many people don't post their children on social media because of how hateful and how nosy the world can be. What she did is nothing new or special. So realistically, Nobody cared. The announcement was very unnecessary. She should have just kept that to herself. This didn't really have to be a speech. If she feels like she didn't have anything to explain to anybody, why get yeah, on stage wh and what's explain the it to everybody? What was this a war for? She was trying to check and clock people Baby mama, who were trying to come for her. <laughs> what was this? This is so random. Like, when was this? And I'm confused why it was brought up. I don't feel like it correlated to any uh, award that she got. I already talked about how I felt about this millions of times. I'm tired of talking about her and this baby. Good, good luck with Halo, Halo, whatever. For hiding her pregnancy. Who were you checking? The few people on Twitter? Because I personally give a fuck about Halle Bailey's pregnancy that much. Okay, yeah, she's pregnant. Okay, yeah, she's hiding it. Who the fuck cares? Because once I shut off my phone, I don't give a fuck about Halle Bailey or a lot of these fucking celebrities. I have shit to do. My fucking ass hurt. I got bills to pay. Yes, Inflation is crazy right now and it's hot outside. I don't give a fuck yeah. what Halle Bailey is hiding. Her pregnancy. That I don't care. Once I close my phone and turn off my computer, I just don't care anymore. And I'm sure most of y'all can say the same. Twitter removing public likes is probably the dumbest thing that they could have ever done. Elon Musk is slowly but steadily killing the platform day by day. And it's a shame what he's done to the platform. Because I don't understand what making people's likes private does for Twitter. I just don't understand. You know, now I can't be nosy right. and look at people's likes anymore. Right. It's okay to have kids in your 40s, 50s, or even your 60s. I mean, look at Naomi Campbell. Look at Tyra Banks. Look at Janet Jackson. Janet Jackson had her first kid when she was like 50 or 51 or some shit. You can have your first Period. kid in your 40s or 50s and you can fucking be fine. Just live your life, do what the fuck you gotta do, and you can have your kids late. Who the fuck cares what people think or what society thinks? And if you feel like your bio right. biological clock or your eggs might be all fucked up, then you can just easily adopt or you can or freeze adopt, your yeah. eggs or you can find other things to do. It's really that simple. So yeah, don't feel like you have to listen to these fucking people, and especially these podcasters who say that women have to hurry up because, you know, they're running out of time and they got to get kids to settle down. Don't listen to these fucking people. And if you don't want any fucking kids, fuck these damn kids. It's expensive out here and it's hot outside. Megan Good is a very yes. actress and I don't think she gets enough credit for her contributions for being in the industry for literally 30 plus years. She's been in the game for as long as I can remember. She's been around since she's like, since she's been he like, what, she five actress? years old. 
Megan Good deserves an Academy Award. Oh. Tina Marie deserves way more credit than what society gives her. She was a big deal in the 80s and in the 90s, but you don't really hear much about her when people talk about oh, art and her music. and soul music. She deserves her flowers and deserves a biopic. I really feel like Tina Marie is one of the greatest singers of all time. And it's really unfortunate that we don't hear about her much in stars and films and people's comparisons and when people talk about the greats. Do y'all hear her fucking voice? I'm surprised people don't talk about her more often. And my final unpopular opinion is this. If you are still alive and breathing, you still have time to do all the shit you want to do. Most of your faves blew up pretty late. Lizzo blew up at 30. Viola Davis blew up in her 40s. And the guy, Colonel Sanders, the guy who started KFC, literally became a multi-millionaire by the time he was in his 60s. Hear me out. You still have time to do whatever you want. People assume that just because they hit that 30, 40, or 50 milestone that it's pretty much over and done with for them. No, it's not. You can still try to find a new job. You can still uh, change careers. You can still be a digital life. nomad and just go live somewhere else. You can still save up your coins and sell all your shit and move to a fucking, you know, nearby territory. You can literally do everything. The good thing about life is that you can literally choose again. So, yeah, you still have time. So, I don't give a fuck how old I get or how old anyone much. gets. You can just literally start fresh and try new things and just do it. You don't have to literally settle for all the shit that's in front of you. It's literally your life. You just got to be breathing and alive. And if you're watching this, you're probably breathing and still alive and can probably do everything. But I'll go for this video. Please be sure to like, comment. Preach. I like this video. Obviously, I don't always agree with, with his opinions, and that's fine. Not supposed to. We're not the same person. Um, but, you know, I respect his opinions. I respect that he's very vocal and uh, very straightforward about how he feels, and that's not on that. He doesn't tiptoe around anything. And, yeah, I'm always seeing that left and right, people tiptoeing. So I feel like when you do have people who are direct, other people don't really know how to take that. Um, and it is met with hate. You know, I, I get hate uh, randomly. <laughs> People want to DM me and um, send me uh, threats and stuff like that online. I don't know how you're going to do anything to me, but sure. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. I'm still talking my shit, and I respect those who do the same. Y'all let me know what y'all think, though. Let me know what other videos you want to watch, and I'll see y'all on the next one. Bye!